Speaking of going back, do we not go back to the scholars that preceded us? For example, there's the 8th century Maliki scholar Abu al-Qasim al-Burzuli who actually called for the replacement of the the hudud as we describe them today with things like financial penalties. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? I don't think that's actually a, a correct quote uh, from Abu al-Qasim Sali, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, Maliki scholar. Uh, I believe what the discussion is, is what I alluded to earlier about the, not about the financial penalties as a replacement for the hudud, but as financial penalties in terms of ta'zir. Mm -hmm. Is it allowed for a judge to implement a financial penalty? And I did allude earlier to the fact that the jumhur of the ulama, the majority, from the Hanafiya, the Malikiya, the Shafi'iya, and the Hanabila, they held the, permission, the, the, the opinion that it's not permissible. That financial penalties are not a tool that is available to the Qadi in that sense, except where there is a clear evidence in Islam for that. Uh, and Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah and others, and among them others from those we've quoted, they held the opinion that it is permissible to introduce financial penalties on the in the aspect of discretionary punishment. That is what I have understood from what I have read. Okay. I did go through the book uh, today and I did look at some of the quotes earlier on. And from what I can see, and again, we can look at this in more research, we can bring it in the Q&A if there are further things to look at, but what I can see from this is this discussion is about the use of discretionary financial punishment and no, nothing 